Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome to an introduction to PyTest and the Django framework. This is a practical nature tutorial where we try and learn by example testing our Django project using the PyTest testing framework. If you want to set up your environment to the exact specification to the machine that I'm working on, here I'm going to be installing PyTest 3.2.3. We're going to be utilizing Windows 10 and we'll go ahead and pip install Django, which is currently 3.2, and I'm running Python 3.9. So this isn't a requirement for you to run the software and follow the tutorial. You will find that PyTest will run, for example, on Linux, of course, and on different versions of Django and Python. PyTest is probably the most widespread Python testing framework. There are many other Python testing frameworks which you might use for specific use cases. If you are new to testing, it's worth reading around other frameworks to familiarize yourself with the spectrum of frameworks that are available and what benefits they offer. I always believe it's good to keep an open mindset to ensure that we choose the right tools for the right task. So as I've already said, PyTest probably being the most widespread testing framework in the Python community. Probably second to that is unit test. So I typically see new students gravitate to unit test as unit test is a module that comes with the Python standard library. So there's no additional install or setup needed to use unit test. Over time, unit test is a very good tool. It's a reliable solution for most projects. However, some would suggest that it lacks some of the convenient features that are available in the more advanced testing frameworks such as PyTest. Convenience is probably the best word to describe PyTest, at least initially, because I would consider it as easy to get started with and it has really simple syntax. In actual fact, an added benefit of PyTest is that it is mostly compatible with unit test. So if you are coming from unit test or if you started learning testing with unit tests, it would be easy to migrate from unit test to PyTest. And in actual fact, doing that, you'll probably see the convenience that PyTest can provide. If you do want to follow this tutorial step by step, you're going to need Python installed. And here I'm using Visual Studio Code as my code editor. Just quickly giving you an overview of what's going to be covered in this tutorial. We're going to start by creating a new project. And then I would discuss a little bit about test folder structures in Django. We then go ahead and install PyTest and all the other packages that are required to get started. And then talk a little bit about the setup and PyTest test discovery. We can then go ahead and create our first tests and run some tests with PyTest. So assuming you're new to Django, I'm gonna just quite quickly take you through how to start a new Django application. If you aren't new to Django, just skip ahead to the next part of this tutorial. So assuming you have Python installed, we go ahead and just create a new virtual environment. So here I'm on Windows, remember. So we create a new virtual environment. So VMV is the software SA here um, with the M flag, and then the folder is going to be VMV. So you can change that if you want to. So now we just need to activate. So let's go into the folder. Oh. Uh, go into the folder and activate your virtual environment and then we can pip install Django. Okay, so with that done, I'm just going to go ahead now and type in oh, Django admin start project core and then space and a dot. That should create a new folder inside of my project folder structure here called core. So that's going to be my project, my core project my Django core project. And inside of here we have this setting. So let's just create a, a new project now inside of our core. So change directory core. And then let's just run the Django admin again. Start project, oh, in this case, sorry, start app. And then we call this app one. So we're just gonna build a new app. We're gonna put this inside of our core. There it is. And then just go to settings. And we just need to register that, of course app one there we go so if we make any tables or database tables that will just get registered with django so we can access them from this app one so test folder structures in django 
So typically when you create a new application in Django, you're provided a test file. So here we can play some tests. Now you might find tests in a number of different folders or areas. So for example, inside the app, you might have a, a new folder called tests, for example, and inside of that, you might then place your tests. So that's one place where you might find tests inside of the actual application. And of course, in a lot of respects, it makes sense to place the test as near as to the application as possible or to associate the test with the app by placing the test file inside of the application. So it might be in actual fact, you might have a separate test folder in the root directory here. And this might be a, a way of conjugating, collecting all the tests from all the applications and running from in this folder. So that might also be the case too. So a lot of this is down to preference. And because we're really beginning this journey of testing with PyTest, um, what we're gonna do here, what I'm going to do in this particular case is just place all the tests inside of this folder here called test that's on the root here. And that's no, for no particular reason other than to try and make them available for this tutorial series. So think about where you want to put your tests. Normally you might see tests associated with applications within or closer to the actual application. And potentially then you might want to then create a, a separate testing area where you collect all those tests together because you might have multiple apps and then configure it from there. So completely optional. We're going to be running this test folder right here. So now let's go ahead and install PyTest. Now you will find PyTest on the package, uh, Python package index. So currently PyTest 6.2.3. Now I believe the developers of this application, of this, sorry, package also build the PyTest Django. So here we can see that it is fully supported here. So PyTest Django 4.2.0. So in actual fact, this is the application we want to install. And this PyTest Django allows us, like it says, to test our Django project applications using the PyTest testing tool. So if you like, maybe this is a, a wrapper around Django and PyTest. So when we install this, it will actually also install PyTest. And this is a, I guess we can think of this as a, an interface between Django and PyTest. And it also provides us some additional options so we can work effectively with our Django project and PyTest. So I'll just go ahead and pip install PyTest Django. So once we've installed PyTest Django, let's head over to the quick start tutorial guide. So this is the documentation and it's worth having a read through uh, further once you've completed this tutorial to have a look at some of the other features that it provides. But it does provide us here a, a clear starting point in that we need to create a PyTest.ini file. So let's build this on our project root. Let's go back into our application. And then the first setting that we're asked to apply is to configure PyTest and point it to our project settings file. So let's go ahead and do that. So my project's called core. Inside of my core is settings, of course. So that's now configured. So secondly, what we can now do is just define where PyTest collects tests from. And here we can define the actual file names that we want to use or associate to tests within our Django project. So let's go ahead and define what files we want to utilize or what naming conventions we want to utilize for our test files. So here I'm going to be utilizing, I'm gonna remove this, and this one here, so all my tests in my project, they're gonna be named test underscore and then something associated to the tests. So I know what the file is referring to, the test file is referring to. So in this case, test underscore, that's the mandatory part and then EX1. Okay, so that's now gonna be picked up by PyTest as a test because I have to find it right here. Now PyTest will look for, the test runner will look for all files that utilize this naming convention within my whole project. So this is the root directory and anything relative from here will look within all of these folders here for any tests. So let's now go ahead and run a test. So in my folder tests, I've got a file called test underscore ex1.py. Now inside of here, all I need to do is import pytest, assuming you have it installed, of course, 
And then from here, I just need to build a simple function. So let's call this test example. And then all we need to do now is I'm going to create an assert. So one equals one. So without explaining this, if that isn't familiar to you, that now builds a very simple test. I'm going to check that one equals one, which of course it does. That's going to be true. So I would assume that my test is going to pass. So all I need to do now is run PyTest from the terminal. And you can see it says no module named app one. Just a little bit of debugging then. Apologies, it was my own fault because I've got this app structure here. I have forgotten to do two tasks. Uh, first of all, I just need to define where this app is because it's not on the root directory here in the project. It's in the core. So core dot. And then because I'm using the app in this way, I'm just going to get and remove the apps.py. Or in addition to that, I can just add core to the name here. Either way, that will work. So now we've done that. Let's just go back to our test and run PyTest again. And there we go. So no test ran. So it can always be frustrating when you're starting something new when it doesn't work by default. So there's just a few things really that can go wrong here. You haven't installed the packages. Django isn't isn't set up correctly. That's what I tried to show you in the previous step there. And then thirdly, you're not in the right directory. So here you can see that I'm currently the terminal is in the core directory inside of this folder here. So what I need to do is change directory, come out of that and go into the root directory. And I need to run my test from the root directory. So now I type in PyTest. There we go. So let's take a look at the output. Here we have some environment variables. At the top here, nothing really to do with our actual tests. And we've collected one test, or one item. And here it identifies where the test runner has found tests what files it's found tests within. So here inside of a test, we have our test underscore ex1 file. So the green dot here represents a single test that's been completed. So if I were to, for example, run two tests and then run it again, we're going to receive two dots. Now I'm going to need a different name. So now we have two dots. So that's indicating um, the green dot being that the test has been successful. Now we have two passed and the time it's taken to conduct the test. That's always useful. So with that said, let's have a look at when tests fail. So by changing assert to two here equal to two, obviously that's going to be false. So it's going to cause an error. So let's go ahead and run our test. And we now have produced a failure. So it clearly identifies one's failed, one's passed. Now here you can see we have the green dot as a pass for the first test and the F indicating a fail in the second test. We also have some additional information where the failure has occurred. And you can see that is creating an assertion error. So just a little bit about assertion conditions or assert conditions here. Python has a built-in assert statement to use assertion conditions in a program. So assert statement has a condition or expression, which is supposed to always be true. So let's just think of an assert as true. So in the test before, we had assert one is equal to one. So if that is true, the test will pass. So the general idea then is for us to set up the required data, the input data, call a function or method from the source code, and then confirm by assert statement that the result conforms to the expectation. So here, for example, imagine we've got in a Django a basket in an e-commerce store. So we collect all the data or we add item to that basket and then we go ahead and create an assertion statement. So if there is something in the basket, the basket quantity must equal one. If that's true, then we've just tested a, a small component of our application. So we've tested to see if the application does add something to our basket. And we've used a simple assert uh, statement here to test that. So here we use assert in PyTest and PyTest is basically extending the output from an assertion error and providing us more information to help us understand where the tests are failing. So it might be that you want to stop testing when there is a failure. So here I've set this up. So the first test will fail and the second test obviously will pass. So let's go ahead and run PyTest and let's use the X flag. 
and you can see here that the test failed the, the test stopped running after the first failure was found so the te second test wasn't actually run here so in addition to that there may be additional output that's uh, generated from tests so let's just do a, a simple print here test one uh, so if we wanted to output that we can extend again by using the report functions here so rp and that would then now output the print statement here so we can also specify which tests we want to run so for example if we know tests are placed in a certain folder or maybe we've broken our tests into different components and we only want to test one aspect maybe one application for example we can obviously specify that so let's run pytest and here what we can do is just specify a folder for example so tests in this case and the test the test run is going to look within that folder only so for example if i were to um, specify the core folder we know there's no tests inside that core folder so we don't run any tests so we can drill down further so just using the folder structure here we can move into test uh, ex one.py and then we can then move into that file and run the individual tests here so just make sure we're in the right folder so uh, pytest and then test this is the test folder inside of there we have a file called ex1.py and then we have a test here called test example one so we can just run that test if we want to so just to finish off this tutorial let's just quickly talk about pytest marks so a mark is basically a way of adding metadata to a test. PyTest has some built-in marks uh, which we can utilize within our tests and we can build our own. So you can head over to the documentation here. So this is docs.pytest.org and this is mark.html. So you can see that there's a few tests, sorry, there's a few marks here, built-in markers that we can utilize. So let's have a look at two here, that's skip and x fail. So there might be a particular situation where you want to skip a test. Maybe you know it's going to fail or it needs more development. So here we can use the PyTest Decorators mark uh, to skip a test. So if I were to run this now, we will have an indication that a test has been skipped, one has been skipped and one has passed. Similar to this, we can also identify where tests are failing or where we know tests are going to fail. So we can use the x fail marker to do that. Let's go in and pi test again. And you can see now we have one test that we know that's going to fail. So in addition to that, we can actually build our own markers and this can be fairly useful. So here we define in our INI file here, our pi test INI, a marker. So we give the marker a name. So this is the identifiable name that we're going to use within the marker. And this is just a string which identifies um, what this marker does so now we have this in place we can then go back into our test here and we can mark it in this case as slow and now what we can do is we have the option with pytest to identify these markers and only run these particular tests for example so we can use the m flag here and then let's just define slow so now all we're going to run is the tests that have been marked as slow and there we go so that was a gentle introduction getting started and preparing to test with django and pytest in the next tutorial we're going to cover fixtures a very powerful tool that we have to set up data in preparation for testing thank you very much for listening hopefully this was useful and hopefully i'll see you in the next tutorial